Okay, so you're ready. The appointed hour is six o'clock having been reached. I call the meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in any one place. This public hearing of the Town of Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can listen to the proceedings by clicking on a link on the town webpage. In accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the ZBA and paneled for tonight's meeting. I'm the Chair, Steve Judge, I'm here. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Meadows? Here. Mr. Wal Ms. Waldman? Here. Mr. Greeny? Here. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, a planner with the Town Planning Department. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the Town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board for, at the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or for additional information. After the board has completed its question, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the application tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merit, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of its hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is filed until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day, day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision in the relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the registry of deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, ZBA FY 2021-18, Henry E. Whitlock, request a special permit in order to allow the pre-existing non-conforming one family detached dwelling to be structurally altered and expanded into the required side yard setback by 18 feet, adding approximately 180 square feet to the proposed connecting storage space into habitable space under section 9.22 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at 1120 Southeast Street, map 23B, parcel eight, outlying residence RO and low density residence RLD, aquifer recharge protection ARP zoning districts. ZBA FY 2021-19, Joel Greenbaum requests a special permit in order to allow the change of use 
from a pre-existing non-conforming use veterinary establishment to a residential use one family detached dwelling on a pre-existing non-conforming lot as proposed by complementary principal use to the existing one family detached dwelling under section 3.01, 9.22, and 10.38 under zoning bylaws. Located at 300 North Pleasant Street, map 11C, parcel 170, general residence RG zoning district. And ZBA FY 2021-20, John Kuhn, requests a special permit in order to allow the construction of a 36 by 64 foot maintenance garage and installation of two signs under section 3.337, 8.5, 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at Wildwood Cemetery, 70 Strong Street, map 11B, partial, parcel 70, neighborhood residence RN zoning district. Following those items, there's a general public comment period about which people can um, comment on anything not before the board tonight and other business anticipated within the last 48 hours, not anticipated within the last 48 hours. The first order of business tonight is a public hearing on FY 2021-18, Henry E. Whitlock requests a special permit in order to allow the pre-existing non-conforming one family detached dwelling to be structurally altered and expanded into the required side yard setback by 18 feet, adding approximately 180 square feet to the proposed connecting storage space into habitable space. Under section 9.22 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 1120 Southeast Street, map 23B, parcel eight, outlying district RO and low density residence RLD slash aquifer exchange protection ARP zoning districts. Members sitting on this panel are myself, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, Mr. Meadows, and Ms. Waldman. Are there any disclosures? I also want to note that the building commissioner, Mr. Mora, has also um, joined us for the meeting tonight. Rob, thank you. Um, if there are no disclosures, there was a site visit on Monday, June 7th. At the site visit, um, we observed the outside um, property, walked around the house, saw where the additional space would be, uh, the additional structure is going to be constructed, saw the existing underground structure. The, we walked down where the, um, the existing uh, earth sheltered structure uh, it, uh, is open to the, um, the, the fields and back of the property. We walked, we observed the back of the property and the um, um, siding that the applicant was putting up. We walked into the structure to observe the inside. We saw the um, existing connector to the garage or the, um, the underground space. And um, I think that's pretty much detailed them. The, uh, we also looked at the, um, uh, some uh, retaining wall that was there at the, at the property. Is there anything that anybody else would want to add to the list of items addressed at the site visit? All right, if not, um, does any, um, the following submissions have been received by the town staff on this application. A ZBA application, site plan prepared by Randall Iser dated April 26th, building plans, all prepared by Laura's architectural drafting and dated March 1st, which include elevations, first floor plan and the foundation plan. Uh, planning staff submissions include a zoning map, an aerial map, a top topography map, and a project application report dated June 4th, 2021. And the applicant's waiver requests from plan requirements include a waiver from the management plan, landscape plan, lighting plan, and a sign plan. Um, Mr. Whitlock, are you here to um, represent yourself on this matter? I think he's muted. Uh, Henry, if you could unmute yourself and, if possible, turn your camera on. I'm trying. 
Sorry. All right. Take your time. Um, I can. Can you hear me? You can. We can hear you. I'll go ahead and pull up his. Um... Sorry. This is my first Zoom. Well, I'll have to say that you've been lucky to be able to avoid it for the last 16 months. If this is your <laughs> I'd still be riding a horse to work if I could. <laughs> Steve, I, I can share my screen and uh, if he, uh, if Henry wants All to right. introduce himself and his proposal. All right, Mr. Whitlock, um, why don't you proceed? How long do you think you'll speak for? Uh, just a couple minutes. Okay. But so what I'm existing to um, propose to do is where the existing dwelling is now, you can see, and I'm trying to attach a mud room so I can go from the existing dwelling. And there was a tunnel built from the garage, from the existing dwelling into the garage underneath. And I'd like to put a mud room above the ground so I can go from the house right into the, the basement of the garage and turn that into living space, the purple area. So the, so the one wall on the north side will stay, then I'll take out the wall on the right and add, make it a 10 foot uh, breezeway mud room and put stairs down into the basement area, underground garage area. And you, um, Maureen, go ahead, Mr. Whitlock. I'm sorry, and everything will match the existing house the way the house is, so it'll all look like it's been there forever, you know? We shingle siding on the house, as you saw the other day. Stone veneer on the basement garage area. So I'm trying, and uh, you know, the, the neighbors really won't see it because it's all hedged in already. Now, there you go, yeah, now you can see it. So I guess that's, that's what I'm proposing. <laughs> all right. Um, let me just go through. The one question I had, Mr. Whitlock, was about um, trash removal and sewage. I remember there, there was some some pipes. It was downstairs that we observed, and you talked about the the tracking of those pipes. And I thought that was for uh, I don't know if it was for sewage or if it was for water. Can you tell us what you're doing? In terms of sewage, are you hooked up to the town sewage? Or are you town, having town sewer? Yes. So when I did, yeah, when I bought the property, I had a guy come out with a camera because the sewage comes out of the back of the house, which I thought was a little odd. So at some point, somebody, he probably Mr. Collins, had ran the sewer line out the back of the house and down the existing driveway. So we cambered it out because he had a sink and stuff in the garage area, which he hooked into that sewer. So when if you go in the little uh, tunnel now there's a clean out there so I popped out the clean out to see where that went and we ran a camera all the way down there so the camera followed where the pavers kind of go and then down the driveway to the town sewer and it's also town water which comes out of the front of the dwelling okay and um will you be I also didn't notice any place for trash removal or storage of trash um receptacles and recycling is that Something you have planned for, you're going to take care well, of it. In the yourself. kitchen, I have a trash pullout with a, two bins one for recycling, one for trash. And then down in that little shed area, we'll put barrels so we can do them down there, you know, and then we'll have trash pickup. You got trash pickup. Yeah. And so the barrels will be contained in the downs, they'll be not exposed out to the neighbors. They'll Correct. be contained Correct. in a garage or something. Okay. Yeah. One by the road. I have the one down by the, right. that little garage down by the road. That you probably yep. saw when you came in. The last question I have, and then I'll open up to other uh, board members, is your um, if you can bring that uh, the next page up, Maureen. I think it's page three. No, go back. To, maybe it's page five then, and six. The one that shows the um, there we go. That's it. Oh, go back one. 
<laughs> there we go. So the, the angled portion is the, the, the one that's coming off at a slight angle from the house is the Correct. new uh, structure. Um, it extends partially into the setback, but you are farther away from the setback than the rest of the back of the house. Correct. That's correct, right? You're correct. I'm not going any closer than anything there now. Yep. And you're into the 20 foot setback. It is a 20 foot setback, is it not? I think it's 25. 25? I think so. Uh, you're into it for just eight feet and part of correct. The first eight feet of that new foyer. Okay. All right. I have no other questions. Does any member of the board have questions for Mr. Whitlock? If not, um, is there any public comment? Any member of the public who wishes to address this? I don't see any public comments. All right. That being the case, um, last chance for comments from or questions from board members. What I would like to do then, I, would, I think we have a consensus to move out of the public hearing and into a pub, public meeting. And what I'd like to do is um, entertain a motion to open the public meeting on this matter while keeping the public hearing still open. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Mr. Meadows moves. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Mac Mr. Maxfield, is there any discussion? If not, this is a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Ms. Waldman? Aye. The public meeting is a time when the board, uh, for the board to discuss and vote on conditions, findings, and the approval or rejection of the application for the special permit. So what I'd like to do is review the possible conditions that were contained in the project application report and then go through our findings that we're required to make in section 9.22 and 10.38. So the potential um, condition, possible conditions included um, listed in uh, the ones listed in the project application report, the standard project to be built according to approved plans and maintained as needed any substantial changes from the approved plan shall come back before the Zoning Board of Appeals at a public meeting for review and approval. The approved plans include the site plan and building plans, including elevations, first floor, and a foundation plans dated March 1st, 5th, and 5th, respectively. Second condition is that all exterior lights shall be designated, they're designed and installed so as to be shielded or downcast and to avoid light trespass onto adjacent properties. Lighting fixtures shall be selected according to dark sky compliance recommendations of the ZBA rules and regulations. Are there any other conditions board members would like to consider? Any discussion on those conditions? All right, if not, I'd like to move to make our findings. We need to make a finding under 9.22 and 10 point, and of course our 10.38 findings. Under 9.22, uh, we are the uh, we have the authority under 9.22 for we may authorize under a special permit a non-conforming use of a building, structure, or land to be extended, or a non-conforming building to be structurally altered, enlarged, or reconstructed, provided that the authority finds that such alteration, enlargement, or reconstruction shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. In this case, we're, we're talking about a side setback, uh, which is enc encroached by approximately 18 feet, adding about 180 square feet to the proposed house. And that the, um, I don't think we need the, and the lot requirement, Maureen, we're good with that because he's in the RLD district, correct? Uh, correct. Uh, the lot area um, 
since the frontage of uh, the frontage is within the out, outlying residential districts, the lot area requirement is 30,000 square feet and the property 72. has, yeah, so he, they meet that requirement. They meet that requirement. All right, so, um, so we, I propose we make the finding that the board needs to make a finding under section 9.22 for the proposed structural extension and alteration into the required side yard by 18 feet and to propose house addition mudroom on a lot that may or may not, that a lot that meets the lot area requirements. Um, I would also, we have to also consider 10.38 specific findings, 10.380 and 10.381. By the way, if, if people have questions about these findings while I'm going through them, please, please raise your hand and, and let me know. 10.38 and 10.381 deals with suitability in the neighborhood as deemed appropriate by us. We find that the proposal is suitably located in the neighborhood and is compatible with the existing single family home located on the subject property and the surrounding residential neighborhood. The applicant is proposing 180 square foot building addition to their existing single family home. 10.382, 383, 385, and 387. The proposal would not constitute a nuisance due to air, water, pollution, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or visually offensive structures or site features. It would not be a substantial inconvenience or a hazard to abutters, vehicles, or pedestrians. The proposal reasonably protects the adjoining premises against detrimental offensive uses on site, including air and water pollution, flood, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or visually offensive structures or features. The proposal um, provides convenient, safe vehicular pedestrian movement. Staff review, I think the finding that the re applicant requested a waiver from submitting a lighting plan to the board. It is a, while it's unclear about the lighting uh, he is proposing, uh, condition number two requires that the lighting comply with the Z dark scar compliance recommendation of the ZBA regulations. We also find that the, um, it does, that the building itself should not constitute uh, nuisance on air, water, pollution, flood, noise, order, dust, etc. 10.384, adequate and appropriate facilities are provided for proper operation of use. Uh, the uh, utility services are found to be adequate for the operation and existing of the proposed use. 10.386, the proposal ensures that it is in conformance with the parking sign parking regulations. Sign regulations. The applicant provides at least two parking spaces. There is no existing proposed signage. 10.387, proposal provides a convenient and safe vehicular traffic, vehicular movement within the site and in relation to adjacent streets. The submitted plan shows, we find that the submitted plan shows that safe vehicular and pedestrian movement is found on the site. 10.388, the proposal ensures adequate space for the off-street loading and loading of vehicles. Uh, this is not applicable. 10.389, proposal provides adequate methods of disposal or storage for sewage, waste, for refuse and recyclables, other ways resulting from the use permitted. Um, pursuant to the conversation tonight, um, we find that the applicant has requested a waiver submitting a management plan, but he has is uh, connected to the town water and is connected to the town sewer. That will, we'll probably should verify that Maureen, but I think via his assertion um, that it should be connected to the town sewer. 10.390, proposal ensures protection from flood hazards as stated in section 3.228. Uh, the property is not within a designated flood zone. 10.39 deals with uh, unique or important natural or historic scenic features. That's not applicable to this project. 10.392 provides adequate landscaping, including the screening of adjacent residences, uses street trees, landscape islands, et cetera. Um, the applicant requested a uh, waiver from the, the management plan, but we find that the property provides adequate landscaping, including vegetative screening onto the abiding, abutting properties north and south of the subject property. 10.393. The proposal provides protection and adjacent properties by minimizing the intrusion of lighting, including parking lot, exterior lighting, et cetera. Um, condition two, dealing with lighting is applicable to this. While, he's requested a, while the applicant has requested a waiver from the management plan, um, we, the lighting, uh, intrusion of lighting would be uh, dealt with through the 
at to the adherence to the ZBA recommendations on dark scar compliant lighting. 10.394, the proposal avoids um, impact on slopes. This is not applicable. 10.395, the proposal does not create disharmony with respect to the terrain, the use, the scale, the architecture of existing buildings in the vicinity that have functions or have visual relationships there too. Um, we find the submitted building plans show that a proposed 100 square foot 80 square foot building addition to be harmonious with the, the terrain and to the use scale and architecture of the existing building in the vicinity and have functional or visual relationship thereof. 10.396 proposal provides for screening, storage areas, loading docks, dumpsters, roof. Um, it seems that the, the applicant has uh, asserted that they have um, uh, a place to put, put trash and um, recycling receptacles that are out of sight in enclosed garage. 10.397, um, the proposal provides adequate recreational facilities. We find that that's the case. There's enough open space located on the site. 10.398, the proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw and the goals of the master plan. The proposed building addition to the single family home at the subject property is in harmony, harmony with the master plan. The board has determined that we have, uh, the board by this will determine that it meets uh, sections 9.22 and 10.38 under the zoning bylaw. So we have made, if there are no objections, we have made findings consistent with 9.22 and 10.3. Um, are there any, is there any further discussions? Any further conditions or questions about findings? If not, I would entertain a motion that we approve the application with conditions, the special permit application with conditions. Do I have a motion? So moved. Ms. Parks moved it. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Maxfield seconds. Uh, any discussion on the motion? If not, this is a roll call vote. Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Ms. Waldman? Aye. Motion is unanimous. The motion carries. Mr. Whitlock, congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much. The next order of business is ZBA FY 2021-19. Joel Greenbaum requests a special permit in order to allow a change of use from a pre-existing non-conforming use of veterinary establishment to residential use, one family detached dwelling on a pre-existing non-conforming lot as proposed as a, as proposed as a complementary principal use to the existing one family detached dwelling under sections 3.01, 9.22, and 10.3a of the zoning bylaw, located at 300 North Pleasant Street, Map 11C, Parcel 170, General Residence RG Zoning District. Members sitting on this panel are myself, Ms. Parks, Ms. Waldman, Mr. Meadows, and Mr. Greeny. Are there any disclosures? Sites visit were, were conducted on Monday, June 7th. At that time, we met the applicant and the architects out in front of the house, the existing house. Um, we observed the driveway to the left of the existing house as we walked down. We looked at the um, existing veterinary building, uh, empty vet veterinary building. We observed its uh, proximity to the lot line uh, a, a, um, a retaining wall that was there. We looked at the uh, area between the lot line and observed where there's a proposed uh, patio which is gent described to be gently landscaped. Um, we observed what the place, the placement where the new building would be, where the reconstructed building would be located, the four family, the uh, four, un four unit or single family dwelling containing four bedrooms. We observed the existing garage that is proposed to be retained and parking, the two parking areas, both of four, uh, four parking spaces. 
We also observed a lot line in the back. Um, uh, we tried to observe the lot line in the back, but we saw where we didn't go to it. We saw where, where it ran, um, as well as the property, uh, this property, how it ran to the, to the south um, and also observed where the fencing and the arborvitaes would be to shield neighbors from parking lights. Um, were there other questions or other comments that people made at the site visit they want to enter into the record? Ms. Parks. I think we also were looking at the, um, the grading or the slope of the driveway, which will be altered. Yep, good point. Yes, we did. All right. Um, the material that's been received by the town, um, an applica ZBA application, a management plan, uh, a project summary prepared by Zen, Zen Engineer dated March 3rd, 20, May 3rd, 2021, a plan set prepared by Zen Engineer Bucky Sparkle dated May 3rd, 2021, which includes uh, three sheets, a title sheet, an existing con uh, sheet containing existing conditions and removals, a site plan, and sheet three of uh, details. We also received a building plan prepared by Kuhn Riddle Architects dated March 19th, 2020, which includes four, five um, sheets, a cover sheet, floor plans, um, exterior elevations dated March 17th, uh, and building sections. We, we received a lease agreement as well as amendments to the lease agreements via email uh, dealing with the total number of persons on site and overnight visitors. Uh, complaint response form, a parking sticker form uh, uh, for Greenbaum Rentals, special permit findings uh, draft, May 5th, an email from Wetlands Administrator Aaron Jacks. Staff submissions include a zoning map, a property map, an aerial map, topography map, and project application report dated June 4th, 2021. And the applicant has requested a waiver from the sign plan. Maureen, is that, Maureen, is that pretty much it, it for the submissions? Yes. All right. Um, Mr. Green, Greenbaum, um, who are you going to represent yourself, or do you have a um, a representative? I believe Chris Farley is going to make the presentation. Please. Okay. Yes. Mr. Farley, give us your name and address, please, for the record. Uh, so my name is Chris Farley. I'm an architect with Kuhn Riddle Architects at um, uh, uh, on at 28 uh, Amity uh, in Amherst. Um, and Maureen, are, are, can I share my screen or, or do you want to share yours? So, uh, please go ahead and, and share your screen. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can, can everyone see that? Yep. Okay, great. So, um, uh, this is the uh, location of the property, uh, North Pleasant, right across from Kendrick Park. Uh, it's quite, the lot is quite deep and it, it's uh, kind of a hammerhead shape in the back. Uh, access is off North Pleasant. Um, I, I'm gonna give a very quick overview of, of the project and, I, and then I would be happy to take any specific uh, uh, questions. So there, uh, this is an existing uh, site survey here. Uh, you can see the, 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 the property lines around here, around the edge. Uh, this is North Pleasant Street. This is the existing front uh, brick house. Uh, there are no modifications or changes proposed to that, uh, that dwelling. Uh, it will remain exactly as is. There is a driveway that uh, enters uh, along the south side of the, of the property goes by the existing vet building, which is here, uh, and then goes to uh, parking and back. Some of it is paved, some is gravel, and this is the one car garage on the property. Um, and the proposal that we have is essentially to, uh, to demolish and reconstruct a building 
that is substantially similar to the existing vet building, which is located here, and to make some other uh, site improvements. So that's what this plan uh, is here. Um, the driveway will stay uh, substantially where it is. Uh, the building that we are proposing, uh, the outline is shown here. Uh, it is fundamentally on the same footprint as the existing building. It's a little deeper uh, going toward the, uh, the west and back, and it has this small addition uh, proposed on the back of it. But it is substantially located in the same location. Uh, the front of it is in the same location relative to the existing uh, brick house. Uh, we are proposing some uh, uh, minor landscape uh, uh, planting beds here, a walkway that would go to the existing dwelling uh, here to the right, and that would uh, uh, go to the new, the entry door and the new dwelling to the left. Um, a small stone uh, uh, terrace area uh, with uh, uh, trash uh, bins and recycling bins. Uh, there will be a new six foot high uh, wooden stockade fence uh, to shield uh, those um, uh, trash receptacles and re recycling receptacles from the property to the north. Um, the, the, the slight regrading we talked about um, is the, that uh, in order to uh, uh, eliminate kind of a high point, a, a hump in the existing uh, driveway and to make the proposed parking behind the building uh, a little flatter, um, the, the, the grade uh, here along this part of the driveway will be reduced by uh, an elevation by about 10 to 12 inches. Uh, and because we are so close to the adjacent property line, we need to install a, a small retaining wall, a pre-engineered retaining wall here. It's about two and a half feet high at the highest point. Um, and then, uh, so in, in the back part of the property, we are proposing four parking spaces here, uh, which would be for one of the dwelling units, and then four parking spaces uh, here that is in substantially the same location as some of the existing parking spaces. Um, the, uh, the area uh, uh, where the new parking is and where the, the, the grading uh, uh, changes would be repaved. Um, there are some small arborvitae, an arborvitae hedge being proposed here to screen uh, the, the, the new parking from the adjacent property. And there are some large arbor, arborvitaes here uh, to screen the, the, these four spaces, which is where the existing parking is from the properties to the south. Um, I will point out one uh, uh, thing here, and, and this is the wetland flagged area. Uh, and we have a couple of um, uh, buffer, uh, buffer areas indicated here. This is the 100 foot, or uh, I'm sorry, no, this is the 50 foot wetland buffer. This is the 100 foot wetland buffer. Uh, so we do need to go before the CONCOM. Um, uh, our civil engineer, Bucky Sparkle, has been in contact with them and has initiated that process uh, for review. Um, and, and let's see here. Um, I guess I would just say that uh, from a dimensional point of view, um, we have a, a non-conforming uh, uh, front, uh, frontage here. It's 48 uh, feet and change. Uh, the existing zoning uh, requires uh, 100 feet. Uh, there's a side setback issue. Uh, the existing side setback is just under two feet of the existing building. Uh, the reconstructed building will be just over two feet. It is substantially the same, uh, but it's slightly less non-conforming than the proposed building. And then the, the, the bump out, the proposed bump out is fully out of the 10 foot side setback. Um, when it comes to uh, lot coverage, uh, we are actually reducing the overall lot coverage because we're removing a substantial portion of gravel uh, uh, parking and gravel coverage here. And uh, the gravel and paving that's behind the existing building uh, is some of it is being replaced with lawn and, and, and the proposed uh, plantings 
as well as the proposed plantings in front. Um, because the, exist the proposed building is, is uh, uh, slightly larger than the existing, our building coverage does increase a bit, uh, but both building coverage and lot coverage are, are well under the, uh, the, the threshold, the maximum requirements by the, the zoning bylaw. Um, the, uh, let's see, uh, parking open space. Um, I, I, I guess I would say as a, as a uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I did want to say one thing. Uh, so we do have a number of uh, exterior lighting fixtures that are being proposed uh, uh, on, on the building. Um, they are in fact dark, dark sky uh, uh, and downcast, uh, dark sky compliant. Uh, here's a, a, a representative image of the wooden stockade fence that will be uh, provided. Um, and then just wanted to quickly go through the architectural drawings. Uh, this is a three-dimensional view showing the, the new front door. Um, and uh, the, the typical downcast and dark sky compliant uh, uh, lights, which uh, will be on three sides of the building. Um, there will be a full, a full basement uh, with a bulkhead uh, and an interior stairway, uh, living space and a bathroom on the first floor. Uh, on the second floor, there will be four bedrooms and a bathroom and a cent center hall. Uh, there is a small uh, deck on the back of the building uh, with some stairs that go down to grade uh, that will um, uh, uh, conform, conform uh, uh, to, the, to the edge of the proposed building here and the side setback. And um, uh, it will be a, a, a clabbered building uh, painted a, 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 an off-white yellow color. Um, um, uh, double hung windows. Uh, it is, as I said, substantially similar to the building that is there, which is just a rectangle with a gable roof. Um, the gable roof proposed here goes in the same direction the ridge does as the, as the existing building. Uh, this is the small bump out in back and the small uh, porch uh, uh, deck in back uh, go, go with, with um, steps going down to grade. Um, and I think that's a pretty good overview. I, I would be happy to take any, any questions that uh, people might have. Thank you. Um, I had one question. Could we return to um, the first sheet you had, which was the, um, the proper site plan, sheet two of three? Oh, sheet two, okay, yep. Yep, I'm, yeah, there you go. And help me out with what the dark line structure is to the west of the new house. I noticed that it looks like, is that, uh, not, that's not the, yeah, between the garage and the, the new structure, is there a fence up, is there a stock, stockard fence up there behind the proposed plantings or what is that? Oh, I see, yes, this is an existing uh, stone retaining wall, uh, which okay. is, which is, uh, is not going to be modified or removed. And that's what this is as well. Uh, those are two retaining walls that will remain in place. Um, there. And we are, we're All just right. adding the fence here and the plantings here. Are there other, other questions from members of the board? Mr. Green. Um, so I did um, bring up the issue of the driveway. <clears throat> um, I guess I would like to know, since I'm somewhat new, uh, what is the width of the driveway when it goes by the building? And what kind of, maybe Mr. Mora or someone or Maureen, what does this meet normal guidelines for how wide a safe driveway is? And I remember I asked um, Mr. Greenbaum why 
the building wasn't rotated the other way, but as I see the drawings now, I can see that if you did that, you would have lost that bump out in the back. Um, so let my question be, uh, what's the width of the driveway and is that by normal standards considered adequate and safe? Well, maybe just as a, uh, to, to answer the question uh, from my point of view, uh, the, the width of the driveway uh, in the front is just over 13 feet and just under uh, 13 feet in the back. So it averages about 13 feet. Um, I will say that we, uh, uh, we are intending to have the, the reconstructed building, uh, this southern uh, face of the reconstructed building be more or less where the existing is. We are putting in two uh, bollards, one at, at the front corner, one at the back corner. Uh, to help protect uh, that face of the building from any potential damage from uh, vehicles going by. Um, I, I, in my experience, uh, of a, a, a private driveway uh, on a lot like this, um, I don't believe there are any hard and fast requirements, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to, to Rob. I, I think of 12 feet as being a pretty typical uh, the typical width for uh, for a driveway. Um, Mr. Green, did that answer your question? Or do you want to be want to get before, it before Rob Mr. answers, Mr. Mora. I, I would just like to add um, the observation that you know, there, there are eight parking spaces there. And um, so it's a, a little bit different from like a private home that might have one or two cars. There's, there could be as many as eight cars. And, and so it seems like um, cars might need to pass each other. I guess they wouldn't pass each other in that little, I guess the car would wait and then the other car would go by. Anyway, I'm just wondering, I'm not trying to raise any, <laughs> any red flags i'm just curious I, I i i think you're absolutely right if if someone was coming in this driveway and someone was trying to to go the other way uh there's there's plenty of space to pull off here uh for the car coming in to go by or for the car that going in to pull off here and for the car that's leaving to go by but there clearly is not adequate space for uh the passage of two vehicles uh in this narrow part of the driveway. Mr. Mora. Yeah, so we would uh, consider that portion of the driveway as one-way traffic. Uh, I agree with Mr. Farley that a typical driveway width that we commonly see now is usually 12 feet uh, minimum. Our bylaw actually allows down to 10 feet, but we, uh, we encourage a little bit more than 10 feet uh, only because we know the, the size of our emergency vehicles, uh, particularly the ambulance, we know has a width of 10 and a half feet, you know, tire width to tire, outside of tire, outside of tire. So, you know, anything over 10 and a half feet, uh, we find to be acceptable for one-way traffic. Mr. Farley, are you going to add any, are you changing the lights on the existing building at all? The lighting, or is that going to remain the same? Uh, the that, existing... will remain, that will remain the same. No, no change uh, uh, whatsoever to any any features of the existing building. The existing building, okay. Um, are there other questions from board members? Mr. Moore, did you want, did your hand up to, or did you just leave it up there? Okay, got it. I have no further questions. Um, I, although, Tammy, did, uh, Ms. Parks, did you want to talk about the, the uh, drainage? Um, no, but I, I am wondering about the Conservation Commission. So uh, what I can tell you about that is that they, um, that they, they're going to, to discuss this and we are gonna propose a, a condition that requires that anything that they come up with be included in the, um, uh, be complied with in the, in the construction. 
So if they come up with something, they seek a change, it will come back to us before we, before we issue a building permit. So that we were, um, and they're fine with that. The, the CONCOM is fine with that. Okay. Other questions, comments? I guess, um, if not, we'll open it to public comment. Anybody, Maureen, do we have anybody from the public who wishes to speak to this matter? I'm not seeing anyone raising their hand. Nope. Neither am I. All right. Last call for, for comments from either the applicant or the board member or board members on this matter. If there are no further questions, um, I and I expect that we're ready to move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open in case we need additional information. Um, I'd entertain a motion to open a, open a public meeting on this matter while keeping the public hearing open. Is there a, some? Is there a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. Any discussion? The vote occurs on a motion to open a public meeting on this matter while keeping the public hearing open. If there's no discussion, this is a roll call vote. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Wal Ms. Waldman? Nope, she's aye. Not Are you? Yep. I am. Mr. Meadows? Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Greeny? Aye. Ms. Waldman, I talked over you there. I'm sorry, but I heard your aye. I did say uh, aye. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, the vote is five nothing. The public meeting is the time for the board to discuss the conditions, the findings, and approval or rejection of the special permit application. Um, regarding the conditions provided in the um, project application report, there are several conditions uh, for our consideration. The first is the standard that the project shall be constructed according to the plans submitted and maintained as needed. And those are enumerated in the conditions. Um, it also includes the lease agreement um, submitted June 4th, but I think, is that also include the um, modification that was submitted subsequent to the project application report? I think we need a, a note here, Maureen, that the lease agreement as modified by the um, um, additional um, communication from the, the owner, from Mr. Greenbaum. Sure, yep. Um, yep. Um, all rooms to be used and labels in the following approved floor plans, A11 and A12. The approved management plan and complaint response form followed by the property owner. Any changes come back to the, um, to the Zoning Board of Appeals at a public meeting. Uh, this all exterior lighting shall be designed and installed so as to be shielded or downcast and to avoid light trespass onto adjacent properties. Lighting fixtures shall be selected according to the dark sky compliant recommendations. Um, any dwelling unit on the property shall be rented, shall be rented, to be rented, shall be registered and permitted in accordance with the residential rental property bylaw. Street numbers shall for both dwellings shall be clearly marked with reflective signage and visible from the public right away from both directions. Parking shall occur on improved services only. The parking area shall be maintained as needed parking and drive shall be constructed in accordance with the requirements of article 7.1. Um, this is the, condi the condition on overnight visitors, which will be part of the lease. Um, two people of maximum, two con consecutive nights stay. The maximum number of people on the premises at any time is eight. On change of ownership, the new property owner shall be required to return to the ZBA at a public meeting for review and approval of the management plan and the complaint response plan and the property shall remain free of litter and debris. Are there any additional conditions that board members wish to propose or to discuss? If not, I'd like to move to our findings that we have to make. First finding is under section 9.22. What we have to find is that the um, special permit 
granting authority may authorize under a special permit a non-conforming use of a building structure or land to be extended or a non-conforming building to be structurally altered, enlarged, or reconstituted, reconstructed, not reconstituted, that'd be hard, reconstructed, provided that the authority finds that such alteration, enlargement, or reconstruction shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. The subject property is a pre-existing non-conforming lot with a pre-existing non-conforming structures as it relates to side yard setback, lot frontage and building area as required under section 6.40 and table three dimensional uh, requirements and zoning bylaws. So we were, we find that the extent, the um, side setback is um, no, not, any more detrimental to the neighborhood than existing. Indeed, the side setback is almost identical. In fact, just a little bit less. Lot frontage really can't be changed. Uh, it's not really being changed. Um, it's already um, non-conforming. And the building area is impossible to meet with the lot, uh, the frontage being only 48 feet. So um, the existing building is almost exactly the same uh, the, the proposed building is almost exactly the same as the existing building um, that's going to be demolished. And so the board, I feel the board can make a finding under section 9.22 that the proposed reconstruction into the required side yard setback uh, by 28 feet for a 1,096 square foot structure and enlarging the proposed principal structure in an area of the lot that does not contain the required minimum area. The board finds that the proposal is not more substantially different in character or in its effect on its neighborhood or on the property in the vicinity and is not substantially more, and is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. Those are section 9.22 findings. Uh, section 3.0. Um, this involves the relationship between the two structures, the one existing and the proposed structures on the lot itself. The development, section 3.01, the development or operation on a single lot of more than one dwelling or more than one of the principal uses described in section 3.3 .3 is expressly prohibited except where the principal uses are clearly complementary to each other or where otherwise provided by this bylaw. I think we can find that um, building an additional house uh, structure, a dwelling unit is um, clearly complementary to the existing dwelling unit on the property. Article seven findings, um, the two, sparkings, two parking spaces for each dwelling unit. The applicant has um, nine parking spaces on the property, uh, eight of which um, he represented to us would be available for tenants in the parking. Uh, in the building. Um, the dimensional regulations and dimen dimensional uh, article in table three are set here, uh, are set out. Um, we have, sec have to make section 10.38 specific findings, 10.380 and 10.381. The proposal is suitably located in the neighborhood in which it is proposed and or the town as deemed appropriate by the special permit granting authority. The proposal is compatible with existing uses and other uses permitted by right on the site. The applicant's proposing two principal uses, or two, family, two one family dwellings on the subject property. There is already a mix of housing density in the surrounding neighborhoods with single family homes, duplexes, three unit buildings and other density sizes. This is um, suitably, no, we find that the Prop the proposal is suitably located. 10.382, 383, 385, 387. These all deal essentially with nuisance to uh, the to abutters, neighbors, and the neighborhood. Um, staff, we, we find that the proposal provides planting of a six foot high fence to visibly seal the proposed parking to the abutting property to the north. Proposal provides planting to visually shield the rear parking areas to the abutting property at the south. The applicant provides a stock photo of the proposed light fixtures for the dwelling, which are um, dark sky compliant. Mount and the proposed sconces located are shown on the building's plans. Um, and we've already sub 
um, certified that the proposed, um, that the existing building will have no change in lighting. 10.384, uh, adequate and appropriate facilities provided for the proper, proper operation. Utility services are found to be adequate for the operation of this, of the existing and the proposed use. 10.386, uh, proposal ensures that in conformance with parking sign, the proposal meets the parking requirement uh, and signage is not required. 10.387, proposal provides convenient and safe vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site. The safe, we find that the, the, there is safe vehicular and pedestrian movement is found on the site. 10.388 requires off street loading as this, is, this section is not applicable to the project. 10.389 provides, uh, the proposal provides adequate methods of disposal and or a storage of sewage, refuge, recyclables, et cetera and for um, drainage of surface water. All plumbing and waste lines will tie into the sanitary, the town sanitary lines as shown on the proposed site plan. Trash and recycling bills will be located on the northeast side of the proposed dwelling unit between the two buildings and will be screened by fencing. Refuse and recyclables will be removed on a regular basis. And in addition, uh, the COM, COM will take a look at, uh, will be providing uh, input to us on any drainage issues should they occur. Uh, 10.390, the proposed in, proposal ensures protection from flood hazards as stated in section 3.228, considering, considering such factors as elevations of buildings, drainage, adequacy of sewage disposal, erosions and sediment, equipment location, et cetera. The uh, submitted plan provides for existing pr proposed site grading, which shows the drainage being directed away from and around the buildings, similar to drainage pat pattern of the existing building to be demolished. All exterior equipment will be located on slightly elevated concrete pads, elevated to permit drainage around the pads and trash and recycling will be placed on concrete pads and screened from the adjacent property. Vehicular paving will be graded to a minimum um, drainage to, to maintain existing drainage patterns. No hazardous materials are stored on site. And the proposal will be reviewed by the Conservation Commission. Um, 10.391 is not applicable. It deals with unique or important natural historic or scenic features. 10.392 provides adequate landscaping. Essentially, this deals with landscaping and bufferage. Uh, the proposed or constituted structure will be located behind the existing structure so no changes to the front portion of the, of the property will be made. Parking will not include islands and will be located to the rear of the two buildings and will be in substantially the same location as the existing parking. 10.393 provides for protection of adjacent properties by min minimizing the intrusion of light, including parking lights and exterior lights. The applicant provides a stock photo. We've seen the existing light in the, uh, um, in the parking area. Um, and they're also going to have stock lighting, uh, they're going to have dark stock compliant lighting on the new building. The um, existing light for the parking area will remain. 10.394, proposal avoids to the extent feasible impact on slopes. Um, again, this is, will be dealt with by Conservation Commission if they have any concerns. 10.395, the proposal does not create disharmony with respect to the terrain use scale and stru architectural structure of the existing buildings in the vicinity which have functional or visual relationships there too. Uh, we find the proposal is located in the RG zoning district and is not within the boundaries of the National Historic District. The board uh, will find that the proposal is in harmony with respect to the terrain and to the use scale and architectural architecture of existing buildings in the vicinity, which have a functional or visual relationship there too. 10.396, the proposal provides screening for storage areas, loading docks, dumpsters, rooftops, um, et cetera. The, build, the proposed location for trash and recycling will be screened. 10.397, proposal provides adequate recreational facilities. Uh, we find there's sufficient open space located on the site. 10.398, the proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw and the goals of the master plan. 
we find the proposal is in harmony with an Amherst Master Plan, Section 4, Objective H3, which encourages opportunities for proper infill development. The board needs to determine whether the, the board has determined that the proposal meets the applicable zoning bylaw sections, including section 3.01, which we made our findings on, 9.22, which we made our findings on, and 10.38, which is, this is the final finding for that section. Are there any questions, comments on findings? If not, um, we can proceed to a mo we, I would accept a motion that we approved. I would entertain a motion that we approve the, um, app, the special permit application, and we can just have a discussion on that motion uh, once it's before us. Is there Move. a motion? Is there a second? Second. Uh, the motion before us is to approve the um, special permit. I get the number here, special permit um, FY 2021-19 with conditions. If there's no discussion, uh, the vote occurs. It's a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Ms. Waldman? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Greeny? Aye. We have a unanimous vote. Motion carries. Um, congratulations. Mr. Greenbaum, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, we have one more. There we go. Next order of business is FY 2021-20. John Kuhn requests a special permit in order to allow the construction of a 36 by 64 foot maintenance garage and the installation of two signs under sections 3.337, 8.5, 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at Wildwood Cemetery, 70 Strong Street, Map 11B, Partial 70, Neighborhood Residence RN Zoning District. Members sitting on this panel of myself, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, Mr. Meadows, and Ms. Wallman. Are there any disclosures from members? We conducted a site visit on Monday, June 7th. Um, we entered this to the main, to the entrance closest to the existing um, administrative building. We met with Mr. Roberts and the, and, um, the two staff people for the the cemetery, uh, including the director and the, um, I think the uh, person in charge of the, of the um, physical plant. We um, walked, observed the staked area of the new, the new plant of the new building. Uh, we talked to him about, we talked to Mr. Roberts about their goal of trying to level off some areas close to that so they could hold outdoor services. Um, we observed the placement of the proposed building, um, how it was low to the ground and there was, it, they were going to uh, uh, enter from a, a, a lower level than currently, lower grade than currently exists. Um, talked about some of the, that the fill would be used for grading. Um, and we talked about the need for, that, that they expressed a need for having signs that the public could see uh, when they came into the, one of the, both of the two, um, entrances to the park or to the cemetery. I think that was a, most of what we dealt with on in terms of the site visit. Is there anything anybody wants to add to the discussion of the site visit? Ms. Parks. Um, that the existing structure will stay and I think will be maintained. Yeah, that, that's right. That existing garage that's there. Exactly. Thank you. All right, the following information has been received by the staff. ZBA application plan, a management plan, uh, project narrative, 
sheet L1, which is the maintenance garage site plan prepared by the Berkshire Design Group, dated April 28th, 2021. Maintenance garage and sign locus plan prepared by the applicant, dated March 19th, 2021. Building plans for the Wildwood Cemetery Maintenance Garage, prepared by John Kuhn, Kuhn dated um, April 29th, 2021. Those include floor plans, south elevation, east elevation, north elevation, another south elevation, and west elevation. Um, designs for plans, the locus map prepared by the applicant, an elevation plan, the main sign prepared by Agnoli, Agnoli Sign Company, dated March 30th, 2021. Direction and address sign, locus map prepared by the applicant, dated March 29th, 2021, and the elevation plan, directed uh, address sign prepared by the Agnoli uh, Sign Company. Also light fixtures, light fixture specification sheets. Planning staff has submitted a zoning map, a property map, an aerial map, a topographical map, and a project application report dated June 4th, 2021. And the applicant requests a waiver from the management plan requirement. Um, Mr. Kuhn and Mr. Roberts, uh, would you like to, to um, describe your project and what you're looking to accomplish? Sure, thank you. Uh, I'm John Kuhn of uh... Cunital Architects and uh, also a resident of town. And I've <clears throat> also been on the board of directors uh, at the Wildwood Cemetery for 10 years or more. I'm currently clerk of the corporation. Um, and if Maureen would be so kind as to share the plans, I'll- uh, oh, sure. uh, bear with me for a moment. Walk through them quickly. Um, the cemetery was founded in 1887. Um, so it's been around a while, probably they didn't give out special permits at that time or even have zoning districts. But now that it's in the neighborhood residence zone, uh, any uh, project of this sort requires a special permit. And since we were looking to do two projects, uh, both construct a building and do the signs and both required special permits, we put them together in one special permit. Um, you can see it's a very large piece of land. And uh, as was mentioned, the brick house that you see, it's in the upper square. Uh, I think it was a farm originally. Um, and it's been the office for the, the cemetery for a very long time. And upstairs is an apartment. Um, the cemetery has two entrances. The main entrance is, is the one on the right uh, near Hills Road. And the, the secondary entrance is down across the street from uh, the entrance to Wildwood Elementary School. There's always been some confusion uh, about that and that's why we're talking about signs. The location for the building was chosen because the, the site is, is, uh, is a combination of uh, rolling pastoral land and, and heavily wooded areas. And this was one of the few open areas that we felt we could uh, build. Um, it's also close to uh, the, the management office and is where many of the vehicles are stored now. Currently, there are a number of vehicles and they all sit outside. Uh, Maureen, maybe you can go on to the, the closer plan or the site plan. Um, the existing brick building is just off this drawing to, to the bottom. Uh, there's an existing garage that you see that will stay. And our, our uh, location for the new building is as, as shown here. There's an existing uh, dirt road that goes along to the west side of it. And uh, this provides easy access for uh, tractors and excavators. Um, we, we built it into the hillside since uh, while it's one of the clear areas to build on the, on, on the cemetery, um, it is a sloped area. So we have to accommodate that slope in the building. We're trying to use that to our advantage in um, uh, hiding the building a little bit so it's not uh, it, it's built into the hillside and so that the vehicles when they're outside will not be seen for most of the, the people that come to visit the cemetery as most of the sites are off to the right to the east. It's a 36 by 46 build, uh, 64 building uh, wood frame uh, concrete foundation walls there will be a concrete retaining wall the angle wa wall you see a kind of at the bottom right there uh, to accommodate for the grades um, 
Maureen, if you'd go to the floor plan, I think that would be helpful. It's three bays where the, the truck plow, the tractor and the excavator, um, three doors. There will be a, a work room for working on smaller equipment. And um, we, we have a, 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 building, a building maintenance person or a, a, a actually a grounds maintenance person who will um, have an office there as well as a small bathroom. So it's a very simple building, wood frame, it's clabbered. Um, it's facing south. We hope to at some point put solar on the roof. You can see the retaining wall there on the right. Um, lighting will be all on the building itself. I included a light fixture uh, cut in the, in the uh, application. It's all downcast lighting, basically four fixtures that are over doors. Uh, the elevation on the right, the east elevation, you can see that uh, while it's a 14 foot high uh, wall, it, it is kind of built into the side of the, of the hillside there. So it will be somewhat hidden. Um, it's just a, a simple uh, wood structure, truss roof. Barry Roberts will be the builder. I guess the next elevation, that's the uh, north side. Uh, and you can see the slope coming down that side of the, of the uh, building. 14 foot ceilings inside. I guess the next elevation. Uh, we're just putting some small windows in to give give the building some character and um, have it be uh, hopefully a handsome structure, not something that detracts. Um, I should mention that we uh, contacted all the abutters and had a, a, a sort of a meet and greet uh, about a week ago. Um, two people showed up, both were in favor of the project. So uh, I don't think it's a, a project that um, holds a lot of interest or concerns for abutters. In fact, the two that came were just both interested in seeing the cemetery. And I, I understand at the site visit, some of you had probably not seen it as well. So it's a beautiful parcel of land. And it, we've been working very hard in, in uh, the recent years to really upgrade the, the landscaping. And this, uh, this maintenance facility will really help toward that end. Um, the signage piece of it, um, I mentioned that uh, this, this is the main entry and there is an existing sign that you may have seen, but it's set back from the road and it's hard to see. So we are putting a two-sided sign there. Um, it's a carved wood sign, but only the Wildwood Cemetery piece is carved. The other letters are too small to be, be carved. They'll be applied letters. Um, it's, it's green uh, with uh, gold lettering. Uh, the the uh, report, the project report from town staff pointed out that the total sign size is a little larger than is allowed and the height is a little larger. Uh, we were concerned about seeing traffic, so we set it up a little higher, as you can see in this, uh, in this diagram. Um, we're willing to talk about it if, if you feel that's an important issue, I suppose we could lower the sign a little bit, but that's, that's as it is shown. Um, six inch steel columns and uh, it'll be landscaped around it. And I think uh, be a very handsome addition and will clearly uh, point out where the main entrance to the cemetery is as there's still confusion to this day. Uh, the cemetery is doing very well. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, <laughs> there's been a lot of interest in it and a lot of parties coming. Uh, and as was su it, uh, suggested, there have been a lot of people wanting to have services there. And uh, I didn't mention it when we were looking at the, the, uh, the plans, but we are planning to, to, to uh, uh, grade this so there's a flat area to the east of the, the maintenance garage so that we can, uh, yeah, off to the, to the right there, you can see the, the dash lines. Uh, we can put up a tent there when, when that's needed. And we've been putting tents up there, but um, it's on a sloped ground. So we'll be able to, in doing the grading here, we'll be able to flatten that out. There are plans for additional plantings and, and eventually doing a garden up there. So I think uh, while it's a maintenance facility, it's gonna be a, a, a nice aesthetic addition to the property. Uh, there's what was one more sign to show you. Um, because there are two entrances in off Strong Street, um, this one, which is right across from Wildwood School, um, that is the business office, but it is also the address for an apartment there. And there's a lot of confusion with deliveries as to where those go. So by putting uh, the address here and calling out it, that 
it, this is the office entrance. We hope to alleviate that confusion. Again, that sign is uh, uh, two by two, so it's four square feet. And I think the other sign is around 10. So we're over the 12 square feet that's uh, allowed. But we feel like since these signs are fairly far apart and serve very distinct uh, purposes, we, we hope that we can maintain the size and height that sh that's shown. Um, I think that's pretty much it, unless there are questions. I guess the only thing I would add is one question that we did ask, or I failed to report on, is we asked about trees that would be removed um, on the site for the construction. And I think there's three or four trees listed that would be removed. I was, just want to make sure to bring that up because I know we asked that question. Yes, um, that one, uh, is, I think it shows the three trees that are going to be removed. We're trying to uh, maintain as many trees as possible. One of them is not in good shape anyway. So those, those three will be removed. The rest will be uh, maintained. And the, uh, the, the size of the signs, I, I certainly understand the, on the main entrance, uh, which is close to the school and not really observable by anybody in the neighborhood. Uh, it seems to me that it's, it's entirely appropriate. The second sign, um, which is for the, which is a little bit smaller, is that observable by neighbors? Is that uh, by, by residents, by residential houses, um, or or is it? I don't I don't remember what across the street from the sec from the second sign. Across I don't the think street, it's, I, well, ahead, the, the uh, Wildwood Schools are directly across the street, and the next yeah. house down is uh, Amherst Ballet, which is on the south side of the street. Yeah, you might be able to see this sign from from that uh, from that spot. Um, but it's, this is not lit, it's not intrusive. No. It doesn't appear to me to be intrusive. Um, and the size, well, I think the, those, it makes a lot of sense for other areas in town. Um, I'm not so sure that it's needed, that, that it's essential to maintain the size limitations in this particular um, application. But I'd leave, I have no further questions. Mr. Meadows. Uh, I, I'm wondering about the others. The larger sign, John. Yep. It, that's that's up on a slope. Yes. Um, it, I, I, given the height of it, might it, uh, if it were a little uh, lower down, might it be easier to see it from the road? Yes, and I, I don't think there's any objection to, to making this lower. Um, I don't know that going down to four feet is is right, but we'd be certainly willing to lower it to a, a height that is. Um, as low as we can go without blocking um, sight lines for traffic. Yeah, that I don't would know how be the you, concern. I don't know how I you would have, could, could build ahead, the flexibility in, into uh, an approval, but we're certainly willing to, to look at that. Well, I think we could have the a revised height, a revised plan for a, a shorter sign Sure. submitted to the building department. And if they determined that it did not uh, impose um, limits on sight lines for traffic, right. that it could be approved. I mean, that's one way we could condition the application on that. If, would that um, satisfy your concerns? Absolutely. I think what we'll do is probably uh, mock up a two by four uh, board and hold it up out there uh, and see what seems like the appropriate size. And we can have Agnoli revise these drawings and, and submit them to the building department. Mr. Meadows, does that solve your problem? Yes. Does that work? Uh, it does, uh, you know, I'd be happy to walk over and take a look when a mock-up is put up. Okay. Great. Are there other questions or comments from board members? I have one other, just uh, this is more curious than it's than essential, Mr. Kuhn. There were stairs on the um, the uh, floor layout. Is there a, an, a, a third, a second floor, or is there an attic? What's the the stairs for? On the in, um, there's or is there a basement? Uh, yeah, the, it's actually just for storage. I should have pointed that out. So the uh, the main ceiling area there is 14 feet, 
and a workroom and office and bathroom do not need 14 foot high ceilings. So they probably have eight foot ceilings. Uh, so there might be a floor area up there at nine Got feet it. that would just be used for, for, for storage. Got it, okay. All right. Any further questions, comments from board members? If not, we can move to public comment. And I see no hands raised for the public comment. All right, the last chance for um, the applicant or for the board members to raise an issue in the public hearing. I'd like to um, entertain a motion to move to the public meeting on this matter while keeping the public hearing open in case we have any further questions or, or need to seek public input. Um, it, do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion on the motion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Ms. Waldman? Aye. Motion carries. The public meeting is a time for the board to discuss and to vote on conditions, findings, and, and make approvals and make our uh, approval decision to approve or reject the application. Um, I've got to find the project application report here. There we go. Under section 3.37, um, the cemetery, this is a, is a, a cemetery is allowed by special permit. Uh, it's located within the neighborhood residence and therefore the proposed maintenance garage uh, is um, appropriate use for a, a cemetery in a, um, a, in a neighborhood residential zoning district. Article eight deals with sign regulations. Um, 8.1 is not applicable, 8.101 in the case of a permitted or authorized use other than a dwelling or use accessory thereto, or in the case of sale or lease of the premises, two signs pertaining to such use, sale or lease, blah, 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 signs clearly within any, that the combined total area of such signs clearly visible from any point off the pre premises shall exceed 12 square feet only under a special permit issued by the special permit granting authority. The combined, we find that the combined total area of the proposed signs is 13.89 square feet, which exceeds the allowed area by 1.89 square feet. Um, we may grant a special permit uh, for this um, under our authority. And we may grant a waiver, a ver a waiver from that, that, um, that restriction. And in our case, we're going to have the a lower sign looked at um, by the by the building department and brought to us if there is a, a substantial change more than just the reduction in height. 8.103, no sign shall be allowed to exceed four feet high in the height above the grade, except that projecting signs with total area of three square feet or less may be up to six feet high. The proposed main entry sign is height of 68 inches or 5.6 feet above the ground. This was the subject of our discussion regarding the height and the um, consideration, the submission to the building department. 8.104, there shall be no front setback requirements for signs allowed on private property under this section, except that no sign shall be set closer to any public sidewalk than 30 inches. Um, this is not applicable. There's no public sidewalk. Um, section 8.5, any section or subsection of Article 8 sign may be waived or modified by the permit granting authority or special permit granting authority authorized to act under the applicable section of the bylaw for compelling reasons of public convenience, safety, aesthetics, or site design. We find that the, the requested waiver of modifications of 8.010 and 8.013 um, 
are for compelling reasons of public convenience, public safety, aesthetics, and or site design, and are further conditioned by the um, subsequent review of a revised site plan for the um, main the, the main site uh, main signage. Section 10.38 specified findings that we're required to make, 10.380 and 10.381. The proposal is suitably located in the neighborhood in which it is proposed and or the total town is deemed appropriate by the special permit granting authority. The proposal, we find the proposal is suitably located in the neighborhood and is compatible with the existing cemetery located on that subject property and the surrounding neighborhood. The applicant is proposing 2,300 2,304 square foot detached maintenance garage and two signs with combined total area of 13.89 square feet. 10.382, 383, 385, and 387 all deal with nuisance. We find that the uh, various types, flood no noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or offensive structures. We find that the applicant has provided dark sky compliance, lighting for the maintenance of the garage and other uh, nuisances will not occur. 10.384, um, adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided at the proper orient, op, for, provide for proper operation of the proposed use. We find that the utility services are found to be adequate for the operation and the existing proposed use. 10.386, the proposal ensures that it's in conformance with parking and sign reg regulations. Um, that is not applicable. So those are parking sign regulations, not parking and sign regulations. Um, 10.387, proposal provides convenient, safe vehicular traffic uh, and pedestrian movement within the site. We find that safe vehicular and pedestrian movement is found on the site. 10.388, the proposal ensures adequate space for the off-street loading and loading of vehicles. Um, we find that the proposal provides adequate space for off-street loading, unloading of vehicles, goods, products, materials, and equipment incidental to normal operation of the establishment or the use. 10.389 proposal provides adequate methods of disposal or storage for waste sewage refuge. According to town records, the subject property is connected to the town water and sewer. 10.390, the proposal ensures protection from flood hazards as stated in 3.228, considering such factors as um, elevation of buildings, et cetera, um, the property is not within a designated flood zone. 10.391, the proposal protects to the extent feasible, unique or important natural or historic features. The cemetery is open pastoral land with grave sites or heavily wooded rolling or heavily wooded and rolling. So there is little open level land on which to build. The site chosen for the proposed maintenance shed is in an area north of the existing two story brick building and is sloping to the west and has few trees. But it is the best and possibly only site for the new structure. It is also well located in relation to the existing gravel roadway system. The, proposals, the proposed structure will be built into the hillside to minimize the view of the structure from the cemetery while also shielding vehicles that may sometimes be parked outside from view. 10.392, the pole maintains adequate landscaping, et cetera. Um, the grounds are, of the property are found to be well maintained. 10.393, provides protection by minimizing intrusion of light, um, including parking and exterior areas. Uh, the proposed applicant proposed dark scar compliant on the, both the south building facade and the building maintenance facades. The proposed signs would not be illuminated. There is no change in, um, in um, light uh, splash across uh, to neighbors from this proposal. 10.394, the proposal avoids the extent feasible impact on steep slopes, floodplains, and scenic views. Siting of the maintenance garage works with the sloping topography located on the subject property. 10.395, the proposal does not create disharmony with respect to the terrain and to the use scale or architecture of existing buildings in the vicinity which have functioned or our visual relationship thereto. Staff uh, reviews finds and we find that the submitted building plans show that the proposed 2,304 square feet maintenance garage to be harmonious with the terrain, terrain and to the use scale and architecture of the existing building in the vicinity, which have functional or visual relationships thereto. 10.396, 
The proposal provides screening for storage areas, loading docks, dumpsters, et cetera. We find the cemetery has one 60 gallon recycling barrel and one 60 gallon garage barrel. US waste and recycling provides bi-monthly pickup. The barrels are stored near the existing two-story brick structure. 10.397, the proposal provides adequate recreational facilities. We find that there is sufficient open space on the site. 10.398, the proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw and the goals of the master plan. The proposal, we find that the proposal is located on the subject property is in harmony with the master plan. The board has determined that it meets section, we've made findings regarding sections 3.337, 8.5, and 10.38 under the zoning bylaw. Um, possible conditions that we would impose are listed on, this, on the staff project application report. They deal with the uh, standard the project will be built according to the approved plans, which include a management plan, a narrative, um, maintenance garage site, maintenance garage plans, building plans uh, for Wildwood Cemetery dated April 29th, which include five sets of six sets of plans. The main sign, which is going to come back to the, we'll need a um, condition that the main, the main sign will come back um, an altered design to the uh, building department and will be reviewed there. And if there's substantial change or in their judgment, we need to look at it as a public meeting, it will come back to us. So you can create that kind of a condition, Maureen. Um, and the lights fixtures will be um, are as specified. All exterior lighting shall be designed and installed so as to be shielded or downcast and to avoid light trespass onto adjacent properties. Lighting fixtures shall be selected according to dark sky compliant recommendations for ZBA rules and regulations. Are there any other conditions that people wish to consider or think are necessary for us to make our findings and approve the application? If not, um, I'd entertain a motion to approve the special permit application with conditions. So do, I have, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? If not, this is a roll call vote. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Ms. Waldman? Aye. The motion is unanimous. It carries. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You bet. The next order of business is uh, public comment on any matter that is not before the board tonight. Are there any public comments? I think it's such a beautiful night that nobody that doesn't have to be here is outside enjoying it. <laughs> so we, the good news is we still have a few, uh, a little bit of light left so we can still enjoy the evening. Um, if there are no public comments, Maureen, when is our next meeting? I know we can't meet in two weeks. It's, is it not July? Uh, so we're, um, we are not meeting on June 24th. 24th. We're, we're not meeting. So not, the, we are not meeting on the 24th. Yeah. No. So the next meeting will be on Thursday, July 8th. Great. And to the extent that people haven't filled out the doodle poll on their availability for the summer, uh, please do that. It'll help us plan for um, the rest of, the, uh, of our meetings. And to, I think, uh, Sharon, this may be your last meeting with us. Is that right? Not sure. I, I come in, I'm kind of like the pinch hitter. You know, I come in when I'm, <laughs> when I'm needed. Well, we, we, you, you are needed. <laughs> and if it's not your last meeting, then I don't want to make you feel that it should be. So I encourage you to stay. I'd encourage you to stay with us as long as you possibly can. I hope you will. But thank you, uh, and I hope it continues. And Mr. Greeny, uh, you too. I understand that this you're extending your time with us to help fill in some um, gaps we have in coverage, and we really appreciate it. And thank you for your service uh, for as long as you have been, and and for the next couple of meetings as well. 
So it's good to have you both on, on board. I have a question for Maureen. Yes, um, Mr. Meadows, go ahead. I filled out the doodle poll. Can that be revised now that we're doing? Um, okay, so I can go back to the doodle poll. And you can. So I, uh, I think at the site visit, I might have misspoke um, about meetings after the state of emergency. Um, so the, uh, I believe the, the state house is trying to draft legislation that will allow, allow virtual meetings either for this, the remainder of the summer or perhaps indefinitely, but um, until that is approved, if and when it's approved starting on June 15th, all town boards and committees will need to meet in person. Um, I, I've been told that rumor has it that the state house may approve this bill on Monday, June 14th. So <laughs> I guess it's uh, stay tuned. So I, yeah, so, but yes, but the doodle poll may be advised. So at any I'll point. Wait until, I'll wait until after you let us know whether they approve that or not. Okay, yep. And, and Maureen and Rob, is the town still considering or tr trying to figure out how they're going to um, provide public access via Zoom for our in-person meetings or is there still thought about that once we do actually uh, meet in person again? Uh, yeah, th we've talked about that. Uh, it turns out to be fairly complicated and um, requires a lot of coverage and staffing to, yeah. to accomplish it. So what I understand is that, uh, you know, the, the first effort will be made to have that happen for the council meetings, uh, but not necessarily any other board or committee meetings uh, initially. Uh, okay. But hope, hoping that in the future, there'll be a, either a hybrid or some other type of uh, uh, allowance for virtual meetings to continue. So we'll have, we'll start out with just regular public meetings as we had in the past. I would expect yep. that this board would be back to regular public meetings whenever that occurs. I mean, we're hoping, you know, as Maureen said, you know, there, there'll be at least an extension until September uh, yeah. that we're hoping will happen uh, so this can continue this way. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, Tammy. I just have a quick question for Maureen. Do you have decisions that, do you have a decision that needs to be signed still? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so check your emails. Um, uh, which references the decisions and where you can find the decisions for signing. Okay. What is the process? Uh, so you, you'll have to physically, so town hall is now open to the general public. And, um, and so the decisions are all located on the second floor at the, in the planning department. And so um, I give you instructions in the email where you can find the decisions. Um, and then about getting into town hall, um, the door uh, at the main street door entrance to town hall is, is, is the door to um, enter. Um, and then you can take the stairs or the elevator up. And if you have any questions, feel free to give me a, um, uh, shoot me an email. All right, well, everybody go out and enjoy this cooler weather for as long as it lasts. <laughs> And, uh, oh, yes, Dylan. Uh, I will Most be the important. one to make the motion, but uh, I will say, yeah, so uh, this Saturday, uh, anytime one o'clock to three o'clock, four o'clock, we'll be going. Come on by, celebrating graduation, pulled pork, ribs, you're all invited. I even think, uh, I think we got what, Hilda, if you're in the audience, you want to come, you're invited as well. <laughs> uh, it's going to be at 290 North Pleasant Street. Uh, come on by. Uh, Maureen, I'll send you an email again. You can you can forward that out to everybody. I know Dave's not here tonight, but yeah, he's invited as well. So you guys can come on out, come say hello, get some barbecue, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you. <laughs> and celebrate your graduation. Celebrate the graduation. Great. Finally done. Congratulations. All right. Absolutely. And on that, I will move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> is there a second? Second. That motion is not debatable. All in favor? <laughs> Um, it's, a, it's a roll call vote. I vote aye. Mr. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Ms. Waldman? Aye. 
Mr. Meadows. Aye. And just for good luck, Mr. Greeny. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Motion carries. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.